I love vodka. And the problem is with Wanda. Um, she's my sister. Welcome down the rabbit hole, friends. Spoiler alert, the problem is not Wanda. Since LA, she's been a completely different person. What the f is this? What so disheveled and adamant about drinking. What are your concerns if something drastic doesn't change? I'm, I'm afraid that she could die. We're on to episode four, and this is the finale of the Where is Wendy Williams docuseries. So, the first part of the finale lets us in on an oddly endearing relationship Wendy has with a sometimes hated D-list celebrity who's most well known by the stage name Black China. Uh, Parker. Who the f are you texting? And why the f are you still texting bitches? Who are you playing with? Stop playing with me because you're a liar! And you accusing me of doing so oddly enough, I have been weirdly obsessed with Black China for several years now, since she first appeared on the show Rob and China. You see, China was a part of the Keeping Up with the Kardashian franchise when she started dating and quickly became pregnant by Rob Kardashian, um, leading to him proposing to her and a huge massive fallout within the family. I watched that show and I was <laughs> and I was disappointed when they canceled it because I wanted to know more about this woman Black China who ends up having another surprising relationship with Wendy Williams. Let's listen to what people are saying about Black China's past. The way that this wasn't your typical engagement announcement photo, this was quite literally a declaration of war. I mean, Napoleon couldn't have planned a better strategic move. And at the time, I didn't understand the significance of this photo because I wasn't big into pop culture. But after doing this deep dive, I understand that this is years and years and years of karma towards the Kardashians. But let's rewind the clock a little bit, because if you don't know who that is, that's Black China, or as she likes to go by now, Angela White. Angela is a model. She is a video vixen. She's also the brand ambassador for Ethica now, like the underwear. But she really rose to prominence after she played Nicki Minaj's body double in the Monster video, which I couldn't find a good picture of the two of them. But this was my first time watching the Monster video, and I had never seen it when I was a kid. But what? the hell was this? But again, digressing from that. She was also being name dropped by a bunch of other celebrities like Drake and Nicki Minaj once again. But really how she got tied up with the Kardashians is through Kim. Because Kim and Black China, or Angela, I'm going to use the name interchangeably, but they were really close friends. They would work out together. They would post each other on Instagram. And it's not really clear how they connected or how they met. I'm assuming it's really through Tyga and Kim's relationship with Kanye. But needless to say, they were really, really close. But then in 2011, Black China met Tyga at, I think it was King of Diamonds, a nightclub in Miami. Which, in some cases, I feel like if you meet somebody at a nightclub, there's a 50-50% chance that the relationship will or will not work out. And me, myself, I lean more towards the will not, but hey. But after meeting in 2011 at that nightclub, a year later, Black China would give birth to their son, King. And then they got engaged a month later after Black China gave birth. And their relationship was very rocky, like they were on again, off again. But in 2014, they made an appearance to Kim and Kanye's wedding. And this is the year where everything kind of just went to shit. Because China had already been hanging around the family. She had made a couple of appearances on the show, Keeping Up With The Kardashians. But she was also hanging out with Kylie too. Now, I already did a video on Tyga and Kylie's relationship, which was very sketchy to begin with because they technically met when Kylie was like 13, 14. And they were doing like these weird coded Instagram appreciation posts for one another while she was still a minor and while he was still with Black China. But they were so adamant that they were not dating. And it didn't help that literally months before Kylie's 18th birthday, Tyga called off his engagement with Black China and kicked Angela to the streets with nowhere to go. 
Right, so this rapper Taiga, he leaves Black China and his newborn son to be with Kylie Jenner. And Black China, she's still living in Calabasas, where she had been living for a long time with Taiga. And she ends up meeting Rob Kardashian and starts hanging out with him until eventually she gets pregnant. Rob ends up proposing to her in the process birthing a new Kardashian show entitled Rob and Black China. And this is ultimately how Wendy Williams first entered the picture because Wendy on her show did a lot of reporting about how what was going on with Black China, Tyga, Rob Kardashian, and all the other Kardashians was quite crazy. Wendy predicted all of this before anybody and they ended up getting a show and during that time we really got to see what their relationship was like because it was just extremely toxic i'm not your mother like you better hold your own food or put it in between your lap and then you'll get mad at me over some french fries and like start yelling at me like what yo you have serious anger issues um, how, how am I going to grab your fries Why are you that's yelling, falling? you psycho? What's wrong with Look, you? Look, because it's aggravating. Take the tongue ring out and relax. And no, mind breathe. your business and relax. First off, you do not call a pregnant woman psycho. You just, especially in a heated conversation like that, when they're hungry, they're cranky, it just turned from zero to 100. But two, I don't think that Rob was ready to date a black girl that was not from Calabasas. But that's the stuff that the viewers got to see, like how crazy their relationship is. And by this point, they had announced their pregnancy. They had moved in together. Chris had bought Rob a home, filled it up with stuff. They were bashing Chris about that. Mom has bent over backwards doing all this stuff. My mom told me about Rob making fun of the food that my mom bought him. I mean, my mom literally just helped him move into a new house. I have to call my brother out on this. Like, So like Rob is destroying not only his relationship with China at this point, because I don't know what is wrong with him. I think it's just years of repressed trauma and anger that is making its way out. But they finally welcome their daughter Dream into the family and their relationship kind of comes to a boil in 2016 when Raw posts videos to Snapchat saying that China took the crib, took the baby, and emptied the house and moved out. Get home and China took the baby, took everything that we built for the nursery for the baby dream. So yeah, I am not feeling so good. And I have said this before, I was not interested in pop culture like that around this time. So this particular side of pop culture, I definitely was not paying attention to. But looking back on it, people were genuinely concerned for Rob because they thought that this man was about to unalive himself. Because he was drunk when he posted that and it just, he did not seem coherent. They had to send police to check in on him. That's crazy, the police just came, like eight of them or whatever, that's crazy. Do I look drunk in the video or something? Like, I don't even nah, drink. people can call, people can, all of those things sound like people that don't know you I get the crazy. idea that you were suicidal. Yeah. And what was even worse about this situation is that it happened around Christmas, so he really couldn't celebrate his first Christmas. So the Kardashians were pissed. Let's be honest about that. But so was China and eventually Rob. He ended up losing China. She left him and they continued to fight ongoingly, sometimes in public, sometimes in private, until eventually there was a lawsuit filed by Black China against the Kardashians. Remember when Black China sued the Kardashians? The lawsuit was pretty crazy. So let's break down the legal facts. So after Rob Kardashian and Black China split, she filed a lawsuit in 2017 claiming that the Kardashians were responsible for ending the the reality TV show Rob and China. It was supposed to film a second season, but E Network canceled it. They ended up going to court, and there were a few important legal documents presented. One was text messages between the Kardashians accusing China of abusing Rob. And during Chris's testimony, she even claimed that China threatened to kill Kylie. After a series of testimonies, all witnessing concerning behavior from China, the jury ultimately sided with the Kardashians. Meanwhile, Wendy was reporting like crazy on what was going on with Black China and the Kardashians. She was calling the Kardashians out at times, but also calling Black China out when she felt her behavior was inappropriate and definitely making a lot of comments about the use of alcohol and drugs among Black China, her friends, and possibly Rob himself. 
So Rob and China were over. China lost her lawsuit, but I have to be honest with you guys, I've always had a soft spot in my heart for China. She grew up in DC. Um, I grew up in that area as well, and I'm a really <laughs> I'm really interested in Black China's mom, whose name is Tokyo Tony, and that's a story for another day. But the two of them, they just remind me of so many people that I knew growing up and I see them as being a lot more genuine than the Kardashians themselves and a lot of other people in Hollywood. Um, and eventually things started changing for Black China. Recently, Black China decided that things needed to change in her life. Allegedly, she stopped using drugs and alcohol, started working out, taking care of herself. She did some kind of procedures to delete all the fillers in her face, and she's come out asking people to start calling her Angela White, her legal name. She doesn't want to be Black China anymore. Um, seeing her sober, no makeup, fillers gone, this is who I birthed. Angela. This is love. And eventually, Angela went on the Wendy Williams show to tell her story. And it was interesting because even though Wendy had talked so much schmeck about her in the past, it seemed like they had a really special connection. Please welcome the one and only Black China. <laughs> You took them off. Oh, okay, hold on, wait, okay. Yeah, go ahead. Can Your I hands are shaking. Ooh. Of course. You're in a safe place. So, um, <laughs> we talk about you a lot on Hot Topics. I know. <laughs> At, you're very controversial. Thank you. Uh -huh. <laughs> It turns out that after this appearance, Angela and Wendy formed a bond and started doing things together, hanging out, going out to dinner with one another. And it just so happens that Angela White shows up out of nowhere in episode four at the very beginning to visit with Wendy. Wendy, look who flew into New York City just to see you. Hi! I moved this bag out the way. <laughs> Oh my God! <laughs> it's been a okay, first and foremost, I really feel like this is the first time I absolutely believe that Wendy, number one, fully recognizes the person who's visiting her, and number two, seems like overly happy to see them. Wow, since you've seen each other, right? Thank you. I love you. Thank you. I love you so much. Thank you. Mark, like China OTF, take one. I see so much vulnerability here for Wendy. Um, obviously, she seems still a little bit confused, a little bit in her own world, for sure. Um, but I truly believe for once, she seems to have a connection with the person that's in front of her. We're rolling. Okay. So what's it like to be a hot topic of Wendy's? China comes from the world of the pulp. You know, before, you know, like we had our thing, but this is before we met. So as we looked at before, Wendy has a long history of talking shit about Black China. I'm sorry, Angela White. She has a long history of talking shit about her, but they both agree that once they actually met one another, they found kind of like a kindred spirit, and I can see why. We'll talk more about it. So when I came in, I did her show, and that was my first big show, which was I was like super nervous. Like it instantly, like when I sat on the couch, we instantly clicked. And I think Wendy was the first person in big media to start calling Angela, Angela White instead of Black China, and that meant a lot to her. I have to call you Angela. Can I call you Angela? Yes, please. Yeah, because, you know, all of a sudden it's not Black China, it's a young woman trying to explain her, herself. Thank you. Do you mind? I, you know. Yeah, no, I love that. Yeah. Thank you. So like right after the show, like we went and we got food, like we hung out, we ordered a bunch of food, we love food. And then ever since then, like we just been cool whenever she. So outside of the show and Hollywood, they were hanging out. Wendy even got to know Angela's mother, Tokyo Tony. I'm gonna let y'all catch up. All right. And I'm gonna step out of here. By the way. Mm-hmm. Let me help you? Yeah. 
he... Something we've seen in this documentary is that honestly, it seems to be really important to Wendy Williams to show people the truth specifically about her feet. It's kind of like she's suffered a loss regarding what's happened to her body, and she wants people to know the truth about it, to understand where she's coming from and what she's been going through. But I've never seen anyone react quite like Angela. Yep. So what, so what did I say? Is it, are you in pain? Non-cure. Are you in pain though? Nope. No pain at all. Just even the way that Angela is willing to touch Wendy's feet, to interact with her on like a more human level, whereas we've seen so many other people when Wendy participates in this behavior of taking off her shoes, just be like really taken aback, not knowing what to do, almost like a little bit disgusted. And we can see that that's not the case with Angela White. Oh. Yep, I've got both feet. And by the way, I wore two makeups. Mm hmm. A real makeup. So beautiful. I don't know. I just really see and feel such a connection here. Um, let me know what you feel below. But this reminds me so much of what happened with my grandmother at the end of her life when she was suffering from dementia. And I remember specifically watching my aunt with her, so her daughter. And it reminds me so much of what I see here with Angela, like the kindness, the connection, the acceptance, like utter acceptance of what's going on. It's really a special, special relationship. She's been in the headlines a lot. Have you been concerned about her? Right. Um, concern, yes. And that's when I had to like really lay eyes on her and then really see how she's doing and like let her know and feel like my love, you know? That's always been like our thing. It's good to see you. It's good to see you too. We have to see each other just to give each other like that energy, that good energy. Is this your real hair? <laughs> now here I really got the feeling that Wendy was hoping <laughs> Angela would take off her wig. <laughs> as well like let's be wigless together but i don't think angela was really down for that i cut off all my hair i shaved my hair off i don't even need it <laughs> i was like yeah. everybody's like yo are you okay i'm like i'm okay are you okay like what i hate when somebody's are, are you going through something well, and if i am are you gonna help me <laughs> what a statement if i'm going through something like what are you gonna help me i bet so many people feel that way um, it's not limited to just people who are famous, but many times over when people are going through something, we may ask them what's wrong, but do we really offer the support and help they may be desperately seeking? That's something that's really apparent in Wendy Williams' situation. I like recently been changing my life since, you know, like we last spoke. You've always been like honest with me and like put me in my place. Yeah. You know what I mean? In like the most motherly, kind way. That's why I love you so much. I'm going to be honest that one of the things that probably binds Wendy and Angela together is that essentially they're sort of treated as outsiders in Hollywood, right? And there are many reasons for that, unfortunately. And I do know that many people criticize Wendy Williams heavily. She has a history of being incredibly snarky, digging up people's personal private information, putting it all over the media, being mean to people who work for her, um, saying and doing unflattering things when it comes to celebrities. So I understand there are a lot of people out there who might say, Wendy deserves to have no friends. And yet here, when we watch this interaction, I mean, I think we really see two seemingly like lovely people sharing a really special moment with one another. Because even when I was going through my darkest times, like you never, use that against me you know what i mean and that's how you know that the love is like genuine and it's yeah. always going to be there you know and i'm always be here for you like straight up you can call my phone whenever so angela lets wendy know 
that she wants to be there for her and that she's going to be spending some time in New York. So if Wendy wants to hang out, that could be like a good thing for both of them to do. And I hope it's all for real. I, I believe it is. I hope this isn't just about being in the documentary. I get the feeling that Angela really does care about Wendy and that they probably will have an ongoing relationship with one another. My, my real name is Wendy Hunter. Hunter. Yep. Mm -hmm. There is no denying that Wendy is still in somewhat of an altered state during this conversation. But once again, I see some of the deepest connection I've seen throughout the entire documentary between Wendy and Angela. All right, guys, this will be part one of the finale for me. I'm going to do part two tomorrow. The second part of this episode is all about Wendy Williams heading home to Florida, to Miami, Florida, to spend time with her son and family and the family's response to what's going on with Wendy Williams. Thank you so much for being here tonight. Please join me tomorrow so we can finish up this finale episode.